Any sign of them? No, but plenty of redcoats. A few here, too. Daniel, with the price the British have on your head, you could have chosen a safer place to be. Well, I doubt if they expect me to be this far north. In any case, I didn't do the choosing. He's overdue now. How long do you plan to wait? Well, until he shows up, those are my orders. You know, Beaumarchais is quite a famous man throughout Europe and highly respected, but I had no idea he was so sympathetic to our cause, least of all a secret agent for the colonies. Let's hope the British have no idea either. Ben Franklin's letter said, be careful not to offend him, that he can be important to the revolution. Yes, but not a hint of why he's coming or what we have to do when he gets here. None. Secret agent. Daniel Boone, Daniel Boone, what a doer, what a dream comer, truer was he. From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his rawhide shoe. The ripidest, roaringest, fightingest man the frontier ever knew. big man with an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he oh daniel boone was a man yes a big man and he fought for america to make all americans free daniel boone was a doer what a dream comer truer was he daniel boone It needs work, vast amounts of it. That is, if I decide to use it at all. I trust I have the honor of addressing the renowned Daniel Boone. You must be Mr. Beaumarchais? Cher. Beaumarchais. The same. We are well met. Mm, you live up to your legend, monsieur. Company de Bac. You're beginning to worry about you, sir, the time running on. You are worried, think of me trying to assemble a cast. Oh, of course, the uh, the sign on the wagon that directs from Paris is a little deceit, actually. I had to pick them all up in Quebec, and Quebec is not noted for talent. You're not going to take them all along with us? And the wagon, too? My dear fellow, how else could I transport them to say nothing of the costumes and scenery? Oh, it's all right. He's with me. Is it? Am I seeing for the very first time? I am, I am one of your two savages. No, oh, may I touch him? Superb, fantastic. He has a name, I suppose. I am known as Mingo. You understand? She speaks, and with what primitive dignity. I am known as Mingo. 
<laughs> what a tragedy there are no parts for him in my plays. Oh, come, sir, with a little rehearsal and a bit of makeup, I might do very well. Say, in the role of Figaro. He knows my plays. Oh, not only knows, monsieur, but admires them. With everything else he has taste. Children, come, you must meet these extraordinary people. We should talk, would you? Allez vite. One of my greatest discoveries. I look forward to a long association with this uh, disarming little creature. Mademoiselle... Uh, uh, Brion, monsieur. <laughs> well, uh, let us simply know you, as you will soon be known by audiences the world over as the bewitching Susanna. Hmm? Enchanté, monsieur. <clears throat> it's a pleasure, ma'am. Excuse me, sir, but can we talk? This fellow will be a suitor, the Count Helmivir, dashing, formidable, a model to all lovers. We, uh, we really must do something about the characterization of yours. However, no doubt time will tell. If you say so, monsieur. Figaro and my Bartolo. Can we talk? But I haven't said a word. Children, proceed, I'm sure we are all famished. Exactly what do they know? About you? Nothing. Only that we were to meet a guide. I am no novice at this business, Monsieur Boone. You may have noticed that I did not mention your name in their hearing. Well, how much do they know about your real reason for being here? When I hired them, I told them simply, perhaps a little slyly, uh, that, that, that there was a secondary reason for my trip. But not one of them showed even the slightest curiosity about the reason. And uh, that satisfied them? Totally. I assure you, whatever occurs, actors the world over are interested in only three things. Themselves, their performances, and themselves again. I hope so. But at any rate, it's a little late to change things now. Now, we'd better start moving with British troops in the area. We're liable to run into some trouble. Not with me here and this shrewd and enchanting facade. Mr. Beaumarchais, I understood this to be a secret mission. But of course. Of course. I also understood that you were to explain the details to me. Very well. I am to go to Norfolk, Virginia. You are to take me there. Voila. But, monsieur, I still don't understand all this. A way of getting around the British and an essential part of our enterprise, transport. Of what? Excuse me. If you please. The costumes. Remove them, if you please. False bottom? Exactly. Take it out. Precisely. It is a handsome little package we shall deliver to Virginia. What's the goal for? To buy muskets, powder, cannon. There is a ship in the harbor loaded with weapons. If we do not reach Norfolk within a week, she will set sail for other shores with her precious cargo. So haste must be our watchword. Well, I agree with you on that. Wouldn't we make far better time on horseback? We could load the gold in saddlebags and uh, make a run for it. Not in my opinion. Too heavy for the horses. Monsieur Beaumarchais, about the cast. They will save us from the British. Fear not, gentlemen. I am an expert at tricking the enemy. In any case, I'm under orders to accommodate you. There's no point in arguing with you about that. Indeed. I will not guide you, 
And you will not tell me how to run my affairs. Hmm? Mr. Beaumarchais. Monsieur Boon, you and I come from different cultures. Quite obviously, we are most dissimilar men. But we do share a love of freedom and an admiration for this young and struggling country. Then let us make the least of our differences. And the most of our mutual passion for liberty. Hmm? Mr. Beaumarchais, we agree again. Now let us see what little surprises we have here. Ha ha, pâté de foie gras, haricot vert, and uh, a little canard Beaumarchais. Monsieur, and your wine. Imbecile! You have poured Chateau Ikem. Chateau Ikem with canard. Ah, a child would have known better. Pardon, gentlemen, these stupidities must be as taxing to you as they are to me. With infinite pains, I transported these wines from France myself. I watched over the casks like a mother over her children. With infinite care, I saw that the sun and spray kept from them, that they were not jostled. And for what? So that that fool might serve Chateau Ikem with canard. Monsieur. Figaro! This is going to be some trip. Hmm. Can I bon marché? No, thank you. Susanna. What conceit? Oh, but you must realize I have a thousand important things to tell you. No, 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 no. Where is your news, your fire? You think you are paying back to load the old man? Here, I show you how to move this lovely child. Susanna! Oh, 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 oh thank you, oh, thank you. Oh. Monsieur Mingo. Is it absolutely necessary to travel as if we were being pursued by all the hounds of Hades? One can never tell in this country, Monsieur Beaumarchais. We might very well be. There might even be Indians. <laughs> Let us proceed as best we can.
and my pardon. Yes, all of you. Referees uh, for our little opera, and please be careful, they cannot be replaced. Major, this crate is ruddy heavy for draperies. Uh, uh, lead weights, uh, uh, pulleys for the scenery and draperies. You have the word of a French gentleman. Open it.
skies Soft winds blow Through the wood By the hill The robin sings its song In the summer The bluebird sings its song in the fall the blackbird only sings in the early spring if he's going to sing at all blue skies green meadows Viva didn't leave empty-handed. Must have stolen off during the night. There's no point in going after him now. Not only a bad actor, but a common thief. Maybe not so common and maybe not such a bad actor. He could easily have carried more than one. I'm afraid I don't follow you, gentlemen. That gold, Monsieur Beaumarchais, is evidence that this is not just a traveling company of actors. You mean he's a British spy? I doubt that, but he may think he has valuable information to sell to the British. We're close enough to the garrison at Slater's Fort to use their help, Mingo. You knew the way. Get what help you can and meet us later. From now on, we'll take the mountain trail. The mountain trail? And this? If the British come looking for us, they won't look there. They think we'd be crazy to go that way, and they'd be right. They would indeed. And now, Mr. Beaumarchais, let's stop talking and start moving. What are you doing? Leave it. Oh, not until I've had my breakfast. Oh, I'd give my soul for a bit of parsley. Parsley? My dear Boone, I am a courtier, a musician, a publisher, a shipbuilder, a manufacturer, and a financier. But above all, I am a gourmet, a connoisseur of fine food. I eat snails. You step on them. In reality, I am a seven men. And at this moment, all seven men insist on eating their breakfast. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems to me, Mr. Beaumarchais, that you're eight men. Oh? On top of all the rest, I figure you're a patriot. And we need the help of that man, the patriot. Monsieur Boone, you are a diplomat. Merci. And now, don't you think you should tell your cast what's in the wind? You'd have me do that on an empty stomach? Impossible. Susanna Figaro Bartolo! Petit déjeuner! Breakfast is served. I see you, mes enfants. We will not wait for Almeida. He is gone for good. Or for bad. Monsieur? Later, my child, later. <laughs> Children, until now, we have been merely a troupe of players for rehearsing a fiction. Now it is possible that we shall soon be facing a challenge which comes to few. I appeal to you, uh, not as actors, but as human beings. I call upon your noblest instincts to protect 
this mission of ours against those who would crush the flickering flame of freedom which has been ignited in this young nation. Since we will require your help, your bravery, and your belief in the brotherhood of man, we have decided to make you partners in this exciting enterprise. And do you always carry a gold ingot when you travel in the wilderness? But, Colonel, that is my proof of what I tell you. A troop of traveling players and singers from France transporting contraband for the colonial. Yes, gold bars under the costumes. I saw them with my own eyes. There must be dozens. Of course. And you were running in your eagerness to reach us and tell us about it. Yes, exactly. That's why you were running in the wrong direction? No, no, I became confused. You say you're an actor? Yes. Better find a new trade. No, just a minute. You're not even a good liar. Oh, Colonel, if you will simply stop the wagon and have it searched. I must say, I do admire your gall. Do you colonials really imagine I'm so stupid as to fall for such an obvious trap? I have told you, I am a Canadian, not I a colonial. I have a small force here. I ride out on this expedition, leave this place unprotected. <laughs> not even a good try. And as for that, that is now confiscated. His Majesty's property, the fortunes of war, put him in irons. Colonel, you are a fool. That fellow Boone will have to go to its destination before you wake Wait. up. Wait. Boone? Daniel Boone? Well, I, I do not know the man's first name. Describe him. He's uh, tall, very tall. Coonskin cap, buckskins. You know there is a jail sentence for giving false information to His Majesty's army? Yes, I know, Colonel. And if you're a spy, the penalty is the firing squad. Very well. Show me on this map where the wagon is. off the road to get ahead of us. I am Colonel Joshua Winthrop of His Majesty's First Grenadiers. 
Enchanté. I am Pierre Augustin, Caron de Beaumarchais. Search the wagon. Where is Daniel Boone? I hear. Pardon? Daniel Boone. There is no one of that name in this cast. That man says that Daniel Boone is traveling with you. Oh, he is a cretin, a liar. Did he tell you that I had fired him? You did not. I quit. I protest. Once before, I have been subjected to this indignity, this inconvenience at the hands of you British. You will not find your man in that box. We are looking for something else, Mr. Beaumarchais. What? Gold. Gold bars, contraband. Ha, 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 gold. Marvelous. Would I be wandering through the wilderness with gold? Would I have left the Grand Boulevard of Paris if I had gold?
That's a matter of taste, Commandant. And you may be right. Uh, taste is a matter of geography. <laughs> Sergeant Gresham, Mr. Cagle, Daniel Boone. The garrison at Slater's Fort has been called out to assist General Combs at Tucker's Hill. The skeleton force could only spare these gentlemen. Well, the gold's right down to their noses, only they don't know it. You mean they haven't found it? They haven't found it. But how many of us saw it? Alma Viva saw where it was, not where it is. I found a new hiding place. We're too few for a frontal attack. What we need is a performance. More tea? Tea. Oh, thank you. Monsieur Beaumarchais. The, the nose, it meets with your approval, monsieur. The, the nose? The, oui, monsieur, for the dress rehearsal. But I just told... Uh, you yourself said, Monsieur Beaumarchais, it is our responsibility to bring culture to the wilderness. I still don't understand. In the cause of liberté, Fraternité and égalité, monsieur. Oh, the dress rehearsal! Oh, yeah, 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 go, oh, go, certainement, certainement. Ah, Bartolo! Forgive me, I was distracted. Oh, I do admire your devotion to your art. I do, I do. I'll change my clothes immediately. If my host will forgive me, my players are desperately in need of work. Since we are detained here, we may as well use the time to good advantage. Actors. Gentlemen, your attention. Our play is about to begin. The scene is the castle of the Count of Countess Alma Viva. Figaro, the barber, has just been awarded the post of Major Domo by the Count in recognition of his past services. As our scene opens, our hero is discovered with Susanna, the Countess's lady in waiting, and whom he is betrothed. His song is on a subject which should be very close to the hearts of all of you, the rigors of war. Narciso, 
Non più avrai questi bei pennacchini. Quel cappello leggero e gallante, quella chioma, quell'aria brillante, quel vermiglio donesco color, quel vermiglio donesco color. Non più avrai quei pennacchini, quel cappello, quella chioma, quell'aria brillante. Non più andrai farfalonne amoroso, notte e giorno intorno girando, delle belle trovando il riposo, narciseto al cino d'amor. Delle belle trovando il riposo, narciseto al cino d'amor. I must speak to the commandant immediately. You've already seen him. Now get back inside. I must speak to him now or it will be too late. What for? The spies, they are here. Oh, listen, Daniel, we're facing rough weather. We're facing rough weather. Daddy, we have to fight for it, boys. Una marcia per il fango, per montagne, per valloni. Con le nevi e soglioni. Arrest that man! Arrest him! performance was going so well. How much further to our destination? We should reach Norfolk by mid-morning. Monsieur Boone, uh, then it will be goodbye. Yeah. Would you indulge the sentimentality of an old man? I should so cherish a little memento of our great association. Well, Mr. Beaumarchais. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Parfait, parfait. The perfect souvenir of the frontier of liberty. Mm. Thank you, thank you, my friend. If you will permit me, accept this. Thank you. And my children, did they not rise to the occasion like true professionals? Susanna. Figaro, Bartolo, I salute you individually and collectively. In every way, you perform magnificently. Ah, and Mingo, oh, Mingo, come with me to Paris. 
a genuine American Indian, a true child of nature, and an opera singer as well, you would be a sensation. With me as your impresario, you'd make a fortune. Mm. Him happy here. Him eat good. Him sleep good. Mm. Injun stay here. What a pity. What a pity. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>